This is a video to explain how to linearize your data for this experiment where you shot a projectile, which looks like this. You shot a projectile and you're measuring the range for different compressions of the experiment. Now, after you've done the experiment, your data should look something like this, where I've done the experiment four times, and the first thing to do, of course, is to work at an average, but before we do that, you should probably learn a few things about Excel if you don't already know. First off, when you type in numbers, like this one here, it doesn't give you any decimal places. If you want to make it look a little better, what you can do is you can highlight a list of numbers and you can set all the decimal places to the same thing by formatting the cells. And since these numbers here should have three decimal places, because these are our compressions, if you click on number, you can change this two to a three, click OK. And now we have all of the decimal places is the same. Now the same thing probably needs to be done for all of these trials so that each of these numbers have two decimal places. This would only be really important if you plan to print your Excel data table so that the numbers actually look correct. But just so you know, if you format these cells, again we measured the range of each of the projectiles. We want two decimal places on these numbers because we had to estimate to the nearest centimeter how far the thing went. So, that's all we've really done. We probably also want to increase the font size, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. We can stretch the things as well. Make them a little bit larger. And if you want to make it into a data table, you find this little button in Excel, and you click on all borders. There we go. Now it looks more like a data table that you would have written yourself. First thing, after all that is playing around, is to do an average. We want the average range in meters. Now, you can do this by hand, it with your calculator, and just type the numbers in, or you can have Excel do it for you. It is entirely your choice. If you do it by hand, that's fine. If you want to do it in Excel, here we go. You type in equals, you type in the word average, a bracket, and then you highlight the four parts that you want averaged. That's B, 7 to E7 in Excel. You close the bracket, hit equals, and there it is. 0.12 is the average of those numbers. If you grab that little tiny box at the bottom of this, the cursor changes into a little black X. If you drag that down, click on it and drag it down, it gives you the averages of each row. Again, you can do that all by hand, center of two lines on, or you can do that with Excel. Entirely your choice. So, Maybe you've already done that. Maybe you're just waiting to see what the video is all about, about linearizing data. Because the point of these experiments, we'll go back to the experiment, the point of these experiments is not actually to graph the range or the compression, but to use this given equation right here where it has r and x squared and all this extra stuff. The given equation will always tell you what to do to linearize the data. In this given equation, it's telling us to square the x's, so that's to square the compressions. And then we're going to graph the range and the compression squared. So back to our Excel sheet. If we want to square the compressions, you could have done this by hand again, or you can just have Excel do it for you. If we know we want the independent variable squared, because this is the independent variable. Then all we need to do is say that's x squared. The units for this are going to be in meters squared. Now the symbol for squared uses the arrow button on top of the 6. To do this with Excel, you hit the equals, you click on the number you want, you do that little arrow above the 6, and you hit 2 for squared. Then you hit enter, and there it is. Now it's a pretty small decimal place. If you can drag it down, I got one too many because 0.28 is that one, so we don't actually need this red 24, so I'll delete that. And that's how you do it. Now again, the number of decimal places is a little bit weird here, so you could, again, format the cells, change the number of decimal places so that they all pair up. The deepest one has one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. And all it did is it changed that middle one there. And you probably want, again, to make the font larger so that we can actually see these things. So there we go. That's x squared. If we want to
two graph x squared versus the average. One of the things you should learn about Excel is you would think you could just copy those cells, put them here, and paste them here, but it's not going to work. It's giving you a reference number because here it's trying to average something that it doesn't know. So if we go into the equation of Excel and we highlight those the four trials again, and then we hit enter, now it's giving us the same numbers again. It's a little bit cumbersome to copy what's already been done up there. Sometimes you can just copy things, it's not a problem. So, this over here, this column here, is DV, which was the range, technically the average range, in meters. So, if you want it done in Excel, that's how to do it. Basically, all we've got so far is a column of numbers for the compression squared and a column of numbers for the average 